In today's show, we're going to install and configure the Power BI on-premises data gateway. That's going to let you use your local data, but up in the Power BI data cloud without exporting it or moving it or any capacity, right? You're going to get a live data connection. You can use repositories like SQL Server and SharePoint and IBM DB2 and SAP and uh, a whole bunch of other sources, OData, all types of data that you have on-prem. You can now connect it to the Power BI out in the cloud and take advantage of it without having to move it. It's pretty awesome stuff. So let's just jump right in. But before we do, first, here's our intro. Man, that music gets me fired up. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And today's show is all about Power BI's data uh, gateway, right? Connecting your on-prem data to the Power BI service and then what you can do with it. Now, I am assuming in this video that you've got some Power uh, BI experience, all right? So I'm going to skip over some of the basics. Um, if you don't, look down in the description below and there is a, a link to a video I did that is getting started with Power BI. But I'm going to assume you've watched that video and uh, kind of power in from there. But the idea of this one, if we switch over here to my desktop, is that we're going to take our on-prem data. So we're going to install the Power BI uh, data gateway on-prem. We're going to install it, configure it, and then we're going to uh, use the Power BI uh, desktop client to build ourselves a uh, report using on-prem data. And then we're going to publish that up to the cloud and then consume it on SharePoint Online just like this. Um, so should be a, little, a lot of fun. Should be kind of interesting too, I hope. All right, so to start here, the big key is, is I uh, created this brand new uh, Windows 2016 VM. There is an article uh, linked down below as well that will kind of walk you through the different requirements of this machine. But I did build this VM specifically to be my data gateway. Uh, really the only consideration is that the, uh, the data gateway software can't be on a domain controller and it can't be on a server that, or a machine that might go to sleep. So while installing it on your laptop will work as long as your laptop's on all the time, uh, probably not the most scalable solution. So in my environment, I just stood up a small little VM and I'm going to plop that on there and let this VM just sit there and churn it out. Because the idea of the data gateway is that uh, Power BI Online and it talk back and forth to bring your data across the wire without all your data getting sucked up, right? I don't want to take all my SharePoint on-prem data and push it out to the cloud and have it out there and then use it. I just want to connect, get the data I want and make that available in the Power BI. So that's what we're going to do here. All right, so the step, first step to do in this is we're going to go um, to the Power BI website, right? I'm already logged in as myself. And if you go right over here to the downloads, there is a download for the data gateway. So we'll click on the data gateway download, which sends us over here to this page. We'll say download the gateway. And after a second, it's like, hey, download this thing. Sure, I'll run it. And so now the gateway, uh, gateway installer starts. So we'll say next. We'll minimize this to cut down on the stuff you're reading on the screen. So you can install it in one of two modes. One is the actual data gateway on a server, which is what we're going to do here. Um, that's probably the most uh, correct solution, especially if you're trying to build you know, an actual scalable business solution. But they also have one that can be done in a personal mode. So if you're just trying to kind of play with this, you want to install it on your laptop and connect some things up and just play with it for a little short period of time, you can uh, use the, uh, the personal mode. I've done it always as the, uh, the real one, but uh, feel free to try the other one out. So we'll say next. All right, I cut out the 15 or 20 seconds of dead air there. You can see it's reminding you uh, when you install it on a computer, it's always on or not asleep, and it'll perform poorly if it's on a wireless network. Both uh, pretty, you know, make sense things, but it's worth them writing it down. So good, so we'll say next. Where do I want to install it? That's fine. Go read the terms of use and privacy statements. You know you want to. And then we'll click install here. Okay, so after about a minute, it says, hey, installation was uh, successful. And so then it says you need to paste in the account that you want to use. All right, so we'll paste this in. It probably wants you to type it. But this is my Power BI uh, account, right? So this is the account that I use to log in at powerbi.com um, and all my services, right? This is my minister account for that uh, particular thing. So we'll say next or sign in. And so we'll paste in my password, we'll hit sign in there. And then now it says, do you want to register a new gateway on this computer? Or do you want to migrate, restore, or take over an existing gateway? So uh, I could actually do that because I do have another gateway running, but we're just going to register a new one because that's the more typical process, right? We're not trying to get into advanced scenarios here. We're just trying to get it up and running. So we'll register a new one. So we'll say next. And we'll give it a name. We'll call this Shane's Video Gateway. 
we will give it a uh, key. So this key, what this is, I believe, I haven't looked into it a lot, but I believe this key is just used to kind of hash the uh, encryption so that when they uh, store your credentials and things like that, it's all nice and secure. So I believe that's what this key is for, but make sure you've got this in a recoverable scenario, especially in production uh, scenarios. So say configure, and what it's doing right now is it's going out and it's actually registering and creating this gateway for us online. So we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And also it's worth noting that with this gateway, it does work with other things. So with Power Apps and Flow and Logic Apps, all of those can be configured to use this one gateway. So if you're using the whole Microsoft online suite, you can uh, take advantage of those with just this one simple gateway. So there's a lot of different things here, service settings, uh, you can turn up logging, things like that. Uh, the good news is, is that you don't have to do any of this. So we're just gonna close it. I'm not gonna mess with any of that. And so now if we open our browser back over to our Power BI site, and we go right here, uh, we'll, we, we can say we want to manage our gateways. And you can see the uh, gateway I did earlier to make sure I knew how to do this before I made a video. Um, so here's Shane's video gateway. There's a gateway we just created. And it's like, hey, online, you're good to go. I love the new snarky Microsoft. And so then now what you need to do is you need to add a data source to use this gateway. So this is where you're going to need to know where you want to get your data from and how you're using it. So let's click on that. We'll say add a data source to use this gateway. And it'll say new data source, select the data source type. So here are all the different data sources you could take advantage of. Um, so far, I've only played with two, just full transparency. I've done the SQL Server one. That's pretty neat because I was able to create a database and push the info out there. And with SQL, you actually have two options. You can do either a um, traditional type of connection where it takes and you know embeds the stuff, um, does the query, and it pushes it up there once an hour, once a day, whatever the schedule is you do for the refreshes. Yeah, not as exciting as the other ones. There's a direct connection option there. And so it will, every time the report runs, it'll go and check your SQL server. So you can get, I would call it almost live on-prem data reflected in the cloud without, cloud, cloud, with that. Uh, so that's the SQL server one. Uh, but what I wanted to demo, because a lot of the people that watch the channel are SharePoint people, and it's a little, uh, little trickier almost. Uh, so we're gonna do SharePoint. So it then says, what is your SharePoint site URL? And so my SharePoint environment is just HTTP SP16 because I'm lazy when I named it. So HTTP SP16. And then it says select an authentication method and we'll do Windows authentication. And then it will want to store those. And so I'll do my username is good old Contoso Shane. And then there's my password for you peepers. Um, one of the things to kind of keep in mind with this is that you'd probably want to have a dedicated service account. So I'm just using my Contoso Shane account, but you'd probably want to have one called, you know, Power BI or something like that. You need to give it the proper permissions in SharePoint, but then that way, every time you change your personal username and password, you're not having to come out and update the gateway. So we'll say add. All right. And so then you can go over here to the users tab. And so this is where you can configure permissions. So you can configure who um, in your Power BI deployment has access. So for example, Maybe you were doing something, you want to create one of these connections to something a little more proprietary, like the HR database or something like that, and you don't want other people messing around with it. You can control the permission level here uh, with your users. Not going to get into that today, but you do have that flexibility. All right, now I do not want to store my password either. Okay, so now that all that is configured, what we're going to do, I'll minimize this. I'm going to open up Power BI Desktop. If you've watched previous videos, you know that I just prefer to use the, the desktop, even though you can do most of it in the browser, because I don't know, I'm a desktop kind of guy, who knows. But here I am on my Power BI desktop, so I'm gonna do a get data. Now keep in mind, I'm running this all on-prem right now, right? I am on-prem doing this connection. I'm not, the gateway is not gonna come into effect yet here. So I'm gonna scroll down, and I don't want a SharePoint folder. I want a SharePoint, let's just do a search for SharePoint. I wanna do a SharePoint list. So we will connect. It will say, what is my SharePoint site URL? And for me, that is SP16. And it says, how should I connect to that environment? I'm gonna tell it I wanted to use my, uh, Windows and I wanna use alternate credentials. Contoso Shane and my super secret password, that is not it. And you'll also notice here that it says, hey, the password won't be encrypted when sent. Now you're thinking, whoa, why is Power BI so insecure? It's not Power BI's fault, it's my fault, right? I told it to connect to HTTP SP16. So it knows that is not a uh, secure connection. So it's going to have to send the uh, 
credentials across the web in its normal capacity. But in this case, I'm all on-prem, so it's not a huge deal, but uh, just keep in mind the security warning is because of the way I set up SharePoint, not because of Power BI. So say connect. Okay, so now it shows me all my different SharePoint lists. And so the one that I was gonna play with is this one I created called Number of Blue Shirts. And we will say, all right, there's the data, so we'll say load. And after 30 seconds or so, it loaded my SharePoint data. Okay, so there's my SharePoint data. So we're gonna do a quick little cleanup of that. So we'll go over here, we'll say edit queries. And once again, I covered all this more in the uh, previous video, so I'm not gonna get into it too much. But uh, we're gonna choose columns, because there's really only two columns of data I want. So I'll deselect all. And that is the title column and this particular OData column, which has got a weird name for whatever reason today. Um, so then there is the data I wanted. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the column type here. I want that to be numbers so I can work with it as a number instead of a uh, any field. So that should work. So I'll say close and apply. And now I can check, uh, I want title and my data. I'm gonna rename this one to, let's see, we'll change rename, we'll call this number of shirts and we'll change title to name. All right, just like that. And then we'll now we'll check, uh, do a different visualization. So there you go. It looks a little better. We'll kind of make it bigger because bigger is always better. And if you don't get the whole joke of Todd and lots of blue shirts, uh, it's one of those things for people who watch our podcast. Um, Todd likes to wear blue shirts a lot, so we like to give him grief for that. So we'll change the title of this thing to say uh, number of blue shirts owned. And then we will say data colors. We'll change this to a nice uh, blue because it's hard to have a thing about blue shirts without doing it. All right, perfect. So now we will save our little visualization, right? Our on-prem data visualization. We'll just call this, uh, I don't know, SharePoint. I'm gonna save my file. And then now that I've saved it, I'm gonna take and I wanna publish that up to the magical cloud, right? So I'm gonna say publish and publish to Power BI. And it says you've got two workspaces out there. Where do you wanna publish it? I'm gonna publish it to my workspace. All right, like 15 seconds later, that's done. And so now I wanna say I wanna open that out in Power BI. So here you can see our on-prem data, right? It's been published out to powerbi.com. So this is our report. Okay, so now let's go over and let's click on my workspaces. And so then here you can click on data sets and you can see all the different data sets and you can see this new one called SharePoint, right? It was just created moments ago because when we published our report, that got created for us automatically. But now what we need to do is we need to go out here and configure our data set to do the refresh. So we click on more options here and do settings. You're gonna see that it's like, hey, gateway connection, you know. Uh, so do you wanna use a data connection to get to that data? I absolutely do. So to do that, I'm gonna say use a data gateway and then it says, here are the two gateways that you have available. And so then we know the one I just created was called Shane's video. So we're gonna say apply. So then now our uh, connection has been updated. And then once that's been updated, now we can control things like, hey, do you wanna automatically refresh your data? I do. And so we'll say, we'll do that every day. Um, we'll do it once a day, apply, right? And so you can change this frequency from daily to weekly. Um, you can add additional times. I believe depending on what Power BI plan you have, you can have anywhere from, I wanna say it's like anywhere from like 12 to 40 something uh, data refreshes a day. But either way, this is where you configure it so that now that we're uh, pushing our data out to the web, we're able to pull and suck back in the updated data from our on-prem environment. Also remember, like we talked about earlier, if you're using something like SQL Server, you can configure a direct connection so it updates live, and you don't even need to worry about this refresh stuff. Pretty powerful. All right, and but with that done, you're all set, right? So now if we go back to my workspace here, we can go to uh, reports and back to our SharePoint report. It still looks the same. And so just for good measure, what I'm gonna do to really show you that it's all the way out to the cloud, right, is we can go here to embed in SharePoint Online. And so that will give us the URL that we need. So we can do a copy here. And so, right, this was my SP16, this was my SharePoint on-prem. If we go over here to this browser tab, you can see m365x.sharepoint.com. So this is my SharePoint Online account. And here we'll say, uh, add a page. We'll call this Shane's video page. I should have had an apostrophe, but I'm not gonna fix that. And we're gonna scroll down here 
And then we're gonna use the Power BI uh, preview web part. We'll say add a report. We'll paste in the link that we had um, from a moment ago. And then now we can, once it's finished, now we hit publish. So there you go. So then now this is showing our Power BI report. And so now if my on-prem data changes, once we cross the refresh, uh, the refresh threshold, so it refreshes, the next time I run the uh, report after that, this report will uh, be updated with the on-prem's data. And like I said, if you're doing like SQL Server, it actually happens in real time, which is really cool. Um, as fast as I could change it in SQL on-prem and get over here and hit refresh the page, it was able to get in, pull it back, and do all that. So there was no lag, there's no uh, uh, anything behind on my data. So that's pretty cool. And Hopefully that's enough to get you guys started, right? The whole reason I made this video was when I wanted to use the gateway, I had no idea how to do it. I was hoping for a video that would just show me A to Z, how to go from uh, my on-prem data, install the gateway, and get it out to SharePoint Online. And that's what this video does for you, hopefully. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up, right? You can hit me up on Twitter, at Shane's Cows. Uh, through Bold Zebra, right? This is uh, actually one of the consulting engagements I'm on right now is doing some of this Power BI work. So always happy to help you with this with your environment. And I don't know, lots of fun. Also remember, hit subscribe over here or like the video if you uh, want to see more content like this. The, the Power BI videos don't get as many watches as I'd like. So it's hard to make lots of these until I start to get some, uh, some traction there. So cool. All right, thanks. Have a great day. Me again. Hey, just a reminder, if you want to subscribe, click on my face over here. Or if you want to work together or just need a friend, hit me up over here. Or if really what you wanted was more PowerShell videos, it's probably it. They are over here. All right. Thanks. See ya. Somebody stop the recording. <laughs>